The Cincinnati Reds stink. America's oldest baseball team has started the year a disastrous 3-22 and and are on pace to be one of the worst teams of all time. Only two years ago, they made the postseason, and now they deserve relegation to AAA. Had this happen? Why are the Reds so stanky? Let's take a deep dive into MLB's most abysmal team. Jordan, I have good news and bad news. All right, hit me. Give me the good news first. Give me the good news first. The good news is that in the 1970s, the Cincinnati Reds were one of the best dynasties in the history of not just baseball, but American sports. That's true. That's true. If you've been subscribed here on this YouTube channel, uh, we made great point to talk about how the Big Red Machine is the greatest lineup of all time, and we don't think it will ever be topped. Here we are two weeks later, and sorry, Reds fans, this one might be a little tougher to watch. And that's because the bad news is that the 2022 Reds suck. <laughs> and the reason we are going out of our way to truly make a video about this this week is because their start to this season, 3-19 and through 22 games, is not just close to historically bad from a record standpoint, but when you look at all the, oh, let's go under the hood. Oh, let's look, maybe they're good at this thing. Pop open they the hood. <laughs> There's not even an engine in there. I cannot remember a team this far into the season being last in so many categories. Normally with a bad team, and if you look around, you know, Jake, you know this well as an Orioles fan. Mm. It's just like, oh, the pitching sucks. All right, let's move on. It, it's it's normally a much simpler discussion. But in this case with the Cincinnati Reds, so far they have managed to be bad at every possible thing you can be bad at on a baseball field. And because of that, we are going to dig in and ask the question, how did they get here? Where do they go from here? Is there any hope for the Cincinnati Reds? The oldest baseball team in the country, in the world. Oh my goodness. Uh, so let's talk about these Reds, Jake Mitz. They're a well-rounded bad bunch, Jordan. They cannot pitch the ball or field the ball or hit the ball. Here are some rankings after Sunday, May 1st. They are 30th in Fangraphs War for hitters. They are 30th in OPS Plus. 30th in OPS. They are 30th in Weighted Runs Created Plus. 30th in Runs Per Game. Also, I should say there are 30 teams oh, in Major League Baseball. Oh, no, that's right. If you're a football fan, you know, parachuting in for this video for some reason. <laughs> 30th is last. Ooh, they're ahead of the Titans. 30th in Fangraph's base running metric, which is so impressive. Running the bases is not like an overlappable skill, but they're bad at it. 30th in ERA with a mark of 615. 30th in FIP. 30th in WHIP. But Jordan, good news, yeah. 25th in stolen bases. And 27th in ounce above average. So they are not actually the worst defense. I guess they're tied with the Orioles but ahead of the Rockies and the White Sox. Maybe the defense isn't the worst, but everything else, without a doubt, has been the worst in baseball. And coming into this year, we thought, all oh, the Reds could be bad. Did we think they could be this bad? Did I think that any team could be this bad at everything, even, you know, 22 games into the season? No, I really didn't. There's always going to be bad teams. Someone is going to win 55 games. That's just yep. how bell curves work. What's notable about the Reds this year is the historical extent to which they've been bad. If you compare them to some of the worst teams in baseball history, they're right down there already. If you look at the 2003 Tigers, they were 3-19 and in their first 22 games with a negative 61 run differential. Well, the Reds said, hold my beer, and they have gone 3-19 and also in their first 22 with a negative 65 run differential. Mm. So, so far, they're mm. on pace to be worse than the worst team of the modern era. Of course, that team lost 119 games. So can the Reds stomach another 100 losses? It's been so bad. Could they have 100 more losses? That would be... <laughs> Oof, that would be really tough. Now, another team near and dear to your heart, except not really because it was before you were born. But another team that at least did get off to a worse start, the 1988 Orioles, who lost their first, I think it was their first 21 games, right? They were they were 0-21, but they did win that 22nd. So 1-21 in their first 22 with a negative 76 run differential. So in some ways it can be worse. However, that team finished with, that team finished with 107 losses. That team also had like 27-year-old yeah. Cal Ripken and 32-year-old Eddie Murray. So there were reasons to go to the yard and their start was kind of like a bizarre aberration. This Reds team is not an aberration and we'll transition here to how did they get here. So over the off season, the Cincinnati Reds ripped the whole thing out from the studs and it started from scratch. You know, there are still some recognizable names to get here, but I think to understand how the Reds really got here, we have to go back at least a couple seasons, right? I mean, this was a team 10 years ago that made the postseason three times in four years. This was a really, really good team. They, you know, and now they didn't make it very far in the postseason, but still, you know, they won 91 games in 10, 97 and 12, 90 
in 13. And then since 13, from 13 until the goofy 2020 season, they were a losing team every year. But in 2019, they seemed to turn a corner. They only won 75 games, but they seemed to turn a corner. Their pitching was really good. It was David Bell's first year. And with the pitching staff that they had assembled, it felt like, okay, they're just a few bats away from competing in an NL Central that should be winnable, right? And so what do they do? They go out and they sign Mike Moustakis and they sign Nick Castellanos, I think like on the same day, or at least they had like a joint yeah. press conference and everything. And it was like, all right, hey, the Reds, the Reds, like, let's, let's do it. You know what? This team has such an amazing history. Let's go for it. And then what happens about a month after they signed those guys? Can you remind me what happened? What was it? March, 2020, what was that? It was your birthday. Time. There, was, there was a pandemic, a pandemic happened. The season was delayed, ultimately came back. We all learned how to make sourdough. <laughs> what the Reds did in those months, uh, Castellinis, we'll get to them. We're probably like, yikes, that's unfortunate. <laughs> no one's gonna come to our games to see our cool new players, Nick Castellanos and uh, Mike Moustakis. And that season, the Reds were pretty good. They were okay. Nick Castellanos and Mike Moustakis were okay. But hey, when there's, everyone makes the postseason and it's 60 game season, woohoo, finish Come on in. Home. Come on in, 31 wins for the Reds. But my goodness, that postseason performance. <laughs> I'm happy that the postseason was large that year, just so that we can remember the Reds' abysmal oh. 2020 postseason performance against the Braves, in which they scored no runs. They, the first <laughs> game was one to nothing in 13 innings. The second game was five to nothing in nine innings. It was a horrible performance by the offense, and off we went. 2021, though, it was like, all right, that was just whatever. 2020 is weird. We got COVID's our fans over. Back. COVID's COVID over. COVID is over, man. We're all it's vaccinated. Over. <laughs> We're, we vaccinated Reds fans back in the building. And what happens in 2021? The Reds are actually like, they're okay. Like they're pretty good. And what happens? Jesse Winker becomes an all-star. Nick Castellanos, career year. Joey Votto, a resurgence. Mm. And the starting pitching is pretty good. Uh, Cy Young Award vote getter, Wade Miley. Unfortunately, the bullpen that it looked like they were building was some doo-doo. So because of that, this team only won 83 games. But there still was reason to feel decent about this team in an NL Central where the Cubs and Pirates were still basically going backwards. But hey, Castillo, Miley, Miley, Gray. Okay, we got something here, right? We can figure out the bullpen. Like, Just we'll, a little we'll bit that. less Heath Hembry, and we're Just good to go. Just a little bit less Heath Hembry, and, and we should be in good shape. And if, if Joey Votto is indeed as back as he looked in the second half, let's do it. Let's run it back, right? Let's run it back, right? Let's he go for it again. Heading into the lockout, there, I would say the Reds were middle of the pack for how you, how you felt about it. Right? Sure. Like, you didn't feel rookie feel of the year. Bad. Rookie, they of the year. rookie of the year. Jonathan India. Oh my God. Like, that was not something we were counting on, yes. right, in 2021. Everyone knew that the A's were going to tear it all down and build mm -hmm. it back up and trade medals and trade Matt Chapman or whatever. But the Reds, it was like, oh, this team will be back. But guess what? They weren't. Uh, a big part of this, let's get back to the Castellinis here. The Castellinis, Bob Castellini and his son, Phil, who sure likes to talk, as we learned before the 2022 season. When you compare them to the other uh, owners in baseball, the Castellinis are indeed 30th. Now that does not mean they're not crazy rich and cannot afford to run a baseball team, obviously not. But what it does mean is that it probably did actually affect them, uh, COVID, a little bit more than the Steve Cohens and the other bajillionaires of the world where, yeah, they can say biblical losses, but they were probably fine. Now, is that an excuse to do with the Reds? They'd know. But you can at least look and say, wow, that was extremely unfortunate timing to run your highest payroll of all time. Yes. <laughs> when asked the question, how did this happen? That is a legitimate answer. Should it have happened? Should the Reds have torn it all down? No, but they did. And this is probably why. The moves that they made, they traded Sonny Gray away to the Twins. They did not bring back Nick Castellanos, who signed with the Phillies. They basically traded Tucker Barnhart because his last year of arbitration was too expensive. And then, of course, they traded Jesse Winker and Eugenio Suarez to the Seattle Mariners. They also, oh, they also just like put Wade Miley on waivers. <laughs> they gave him just away let him free. go to the Cubs. Just yeah. gave away. There was a lot of cost cutting for the Reds this offseason. But still, when you looked at this roster, it was like, oh, they're just like a normal bad to below average team. Right? That's kind of how we felt coming into this year. We still have Luis Castillo. We still think Joey Votto's back. Jonathan India is legitimately awesome. We love Tyler Stevenson, right? Okay, how bad could they be? Bad. Could be the worst. <laughs> the worst team. The question now I have is like, are they really the worst team? Like, clearly they've performed like the worst team in years, obviously. Let's go through why, okay? Yeah. Just like looking at the roster. Jonathan India hurt. Tyler Stevenson, who was super, super good to start the year, got concussed because Luke Voigt gave him a head massage. Yes, right? that is one way to put it, yes. One way to put it. Joey Votto has, seems to have fallen off a ravine. Very worried. We'll, we'll get back to Joey Votto. Nick Senzel is not it. That's a miss on my part. <laughs> I was such a believer. Mike Moustakis is enjoying his tenure. <laughs> 
He sure is, man. That guy is not <laughs> fixed or anything. If you're wondering, hey, why couldn't they trade Moustakis? You haven't watched Moustakis. <laughs> Kyle sure Farmer, not a shortstop. No. Tyler Naquin is still living off of this. Colin Tyler Moran is, wasn't yeah. good enough for the fucking Pirates. <laughs> Moran's gone. Their one for Asian edition, Tommy Pham, has been honestly fairly respectable, uh, but that's about it. And in the pitching, Luis Castillo injured has not thrown a pitch. Tyler Malley, who I believed in, has been horrible. Hunter Green, while it's fun to watch him throw hard, has a 6 ERA as well. And everyone else is horrific, besides Jeff Hoffman. Hey, Jeff Hoffman. Hey. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Jeff Hoffman, Alexis Diaz. I never heard of you before you made the opening day roster. Woo. So that's how they've done it. Um, this now, bullpen, I've got to say, is a combination of guys I'd never heard of and guys I hadn't thought about in four years. So, okay, but here's a question. Obviously, they have been the worst team. Are they the true talent worst team in baseball? And two, will they have the worst record at the end of the year? I think the Nats are worse. Other candidates include I the Washington the Nationals, I who think, I've seen a lot of. I think and indeed, the Nationals, pitching-wise, are, are right down there. They're right down there. They might be worse. I think if the Reds, if the Reds players who are supposed to be competent return to competent adjacent and their pitching gets a little bit better and some guys get off the IL, that's a better team than the Nationals. But yeah, I don't think they can make up the difference because this is a tough, <laughs> tough start. But being in the NL Central will help the Reds get back in the mix, whereas being in the NL East will not help the Nationals. Other candidates include Arizona, uh, who record-wise has kind of played, they've certainly played better lately. Your Orioles, of course, who had a competent start pitching-wise. They've really started to look back to their normal poopy selves lately. Weirdly on offense, the offense has been so bad for Baltimore. And then Detroit, certainly they were making moves in the positive direction this offseason, but they have also been very, very, very bad. Kansas City. And then Texas. Texas pitching-wise is every bit as bad as the Cincinnati team. So that could sink them. Pittsburgh. Whatever. And then Pittsburgh, of course. A little bit better than we thought. Uh, Texas, I want to touch on briefly. It's tough because they just spent half a billion dollars to do this. Like, I like it when teams spend money, but it's just it just is funny. That's all. And also, like, it's basically going exactly as, we, as we've expected, except that Marcus Semien's been one of the worst players in baseball. I hope that's not true. But the pitching's been every bit as bad as we thought. And so that's that's not, we don't like that. We don't like that at all. Uh, Jordan, let's just rapid fire. I'm going to say a reason to watch the Reds. Okay. And then you're going to say a reason to watch the Reds. And whoever runs out first <laughs> loses. Uh, I'm going to start with Jonathan India, who I am, I, he has made me a full believer, like full believer. I think he's awesome and I don't think his injury is that serious. And when he is back, he will be a legitimately awesome player. And honestly, probably their all-star if he gets back in time. You never know what Tommy Pham is gonna do when you come to the yard. He could hit a home run, he could go 0 for 8, he could drop a fly ball, he could rob a home run. He could get ejected. Uh, all right, I'm just going to take Hunter Green off the board here because while the actual results haven't been great, we made a whole video about him and he is still throwing harder than basically anybody uh, besides that freak uh, at the University of Tennessee. If you get there early enough, Joey Votto might sign something for you. Uh, I'm also just going to go with like the chance that Joey Votto does rejuvenate. Because while it's not looking great, we said we've we have said that about him before <laughs> and then he had the second half he did. So uh, I'm going to say that there is still hope for Joey Votto. What you got? Are we out? <laughs> are, we, are we done? Hold on, let's see if I can find one more thing. Uh, I got one. Uh, Luis yeah. Castillo trade return. So when Ooh. he gets dealt at the deadline. Yeah, he just has to pitch first. <laughs> yes, he should probably come back and pitch first. But once he does that, I think you're right. And I think that's about gonna do it. I really like Tyler Malley, but I would not say he's appointment viewing, and he certainly hasn't been so far this season. Tyler Stevenson, hopefully he can come back. I think he can be one of the best catchers in baseball, but I don't see them rushing him back for any reason. That's it. That's all we got. That's Reds. Hey, but hey, okay, that's this year. The TJ Friedel slander is real. <laughs> Here's the real question, Jake Mintz. Is there any hope for this team moving forward? Or is this about to be a very dark period of Reds baseball for a very long time? If you have an owner who doesn't want to spend money to improve the team, and if you have an organization that isn't top of the top of the pops, as Jay-Z used to say, in terms of player development and player acquisition, your margins are razor thin. And that's the Reds because the system is middle of the road to bottom of the pack. They have not shown an ability to develop the bottom of the roster or willingness to spend money. And yeah. I think they will be the worst team in the National League Central this year and for the next four seasons. Pirates I, obviously trending up. I would say that the whole plan here is Ellie Dela Cruz becomes a top five prospect in baseball. Not impossible, not likely either. So <laughs> good luck. We are saying our prayers 
for the Cincinnati Reds, particularly for Joey Votto, who hopefully can be better on the field as soon as possible as he continues to grow his social media brand. Joey um, Votto, I don't, I don't want you to do PEDs, but <laughs> can we make one exemption? That could be a question. I think who <laughs> says no? That every year the baseball fans at large should vote for one player who's allowed to do steroids. I love this. Fan and vote. And I think we would probably vote for him, right? I mean, I, I, I wouldn't want it to yeah. tarnish his Hall of Fame legacy. No, would like, it? Because he got he gets the fan he exemption. He got voted in. Right. He right. gets the fan exemption, yeah. Um, but Reds fans, look, we're, we're thinking of you. And uh, we know that we know you're out there. The Reds fans, they do care. This is a really, really real fan base. And so we hope that it gets better one way or another. Until then, pop open that VHS tape of the 1976 World <laughs> Series and watch it on repeat because if you're watching us on YouTube, you probably weren't alive for it. So you might as well pretend like it's the first time you ever seen it. Exactly. All right. Good luck, Reds fans. The road to not 119 losses starts today. What color is my hat, dude? Mm. The color of your hat is red, Jake Mintz. It's red. Does that mean it's a bad hat? does but not for the reason it, it normally has <laughs> <laughs>